origin of cultivated coffee is okay. Yemen. Origin of coffee tree as a coffee tree in Habasha. So Ethiopia. And- Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode two of our five-part series on the history of coffee. Now, Muhammad, you're going to tell us today about the origin of coffee and how it migrated from its origin place, which I believe is Yemen, right? Is that correct? Its its origin yes. is Yemen? And yes. and then origin what happened? Of the coffee, origin of cultivated coffee is okay. Yemen. Origin of coffee tree as a coffee tree in Habasha. So Ethiopia. And- Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros, and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. All the coffee, yeah, Ethiopia, which is yeah, the, the coffee tree is still in Habasha as a wild coffee. And when they bring it to Yemen, they make it like cultivated coffee. And oh, this is where people get it wrong. Yeah. Uh, so, so when people and, talk about the origin of coffee, they need to specify, are they talking yes. about coffee as a plant or coffee as a processed drinkable thing? Correct? Yes, correct. Ah, yeah, beautiful. Correct. The coffee as a plant was in Ethiopia for a long time. We don't know how long. But right. the coffee as a drink, as a consumer, as a cultivated, as a product, yeah. they just buy by Yemeni and in Arabic Peninsula. That's why when Carl Bonlini, when he tried to make the taxonomy and name things and name give name for the, the planet, they say Arabic jasmine with laurel leaf, the bean of which we call coffee. Okay. And at this time, there was no any coffee species only arabica no any other species at the time when carbon line write his book with, which was in 1772 he died carbon mm-hmm. line between 1702 and 1772 and from here all the coffee around the world the birth place all all of the coffee within the coffee equator and the current world mm-hmm. is originated from yemen so how did it and get from Habasha or Ethiopia to Yemen? Do we know? From Habasha, yeah, they, they, they take the coffee, the, the coffee fruits. The cherry? And they dry it. Yeah, the cherry. They try it, dry it, then they plant it because it's a, 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 a planet as, as a fruit tree. When they eat the, the coffee, they take the seed and they plant it in Yemen. And this was in 14, uh, almost in 1400. And the first place they plant it is in called Taz. And they give it name. As mm-hmm. a local name, they call this coffee come from Taz Tazi. This come from uh, they like uh, Abel Tufahi. This come from Saada. The, the, the area where they plant it is within the coffee uh, belt. In okay, the, near help, the equator. help me understand something. So they used to eat in Habasha or Ethiopia. They used to eat the cherries like a fruit. Is that correct? There are a story about Ormo. And the people before they ate it as a fruit. That's in, in Ethiopia, yes. right? Ethiopia, and so yeah. the, then they take that, and and I recently ate a ch- a coffee cherry for the first time, so I understand why they liked it so much. It's so delicious, yeah, it's sweet, yeah, sweet, yeah. delicious, and has a lot of caffeine as well. Right. So you um, you know, when I was picking coffee recently. We wore gloves because just from picking coffee, you can get a caffeine buzz, much more of a caffeine buzz than from um, drinking coffee, which really surprised me. Um, So what you're saying is they used to eat the cherries for the caffeine in Ethiopia, but then they took the seeds to Yemen and they were doing, they planted them there so that they could do the same thing, but then they changed how they were processing it so that they could turn it into a drink. Is that correct? Let me uh, 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 make some clear point. Yes, please. As a, as a, as a fruit, yeah. when Ali Ashadili, the, the, um, this, the, is the big guy, when he pick up the fruit, eat it, he find it very delicious and keep him awake during the night. Then he take the fruit and when he 
moved from Ethiopia because he was living in Ethiopia as well. Ah. He was married to the, the, the king of the Ethiopia at this time, they called Sultan Mujahid. And he married his, some of they call his daughter, some call his brother daughter. But okay. he lived for, for some times there. Then he take the seeds with him back to Yemen and he stay in Mukha. Al Mukha, which ah, is Mokka. called, in English we call Mukha. The yeah. Al Mukha, where he stay, where he have his mosque, where he, he have his uh, grave right now, and all his followers start from Al Mukha. That's why when you call Mokka, sometimes they can name it for Kafi because they know this Al Mukha, right. they, they bought and Kafi come from there. Okay. And then he, he they take the seed and yeah. then they, in a frying pan, like uh, Japan and Ethiopia right now, in a frying pan, they add a little of like sesame oil and they cook it. Okay. And then they, 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 they ate it as a cooked beans. And then they discovered when there's a dry coffee, they put it in the water and they make it as a drink. And there are documented history, a documented poetry. They're written by Hamza and Nashiri. And he died in like uh, 15, 16, something like that. And he mm -hmm. writes about all these uh, uh, stages and how they cook the coffee and how they roast the coffee and what's the degree of roast at this time and what they add to the coffee. And this is called Madah Jalb al Zubun fi Madh al Boon. And this Hamza Nashri was died in almost 1000 something and uh, 1068, I think, and okay. which is almost. He come after the uh, the coffee become as a popular, uh, popular in this area, and the Yemeni they take the seeds and they plant it in Yemen, mm -hmm. and the first they planted in Taz, and they say it in the poems as well. When they planted in Yemen, it's become even the quality better than from some of the the coffee they bring it from Habasha. Why do okay. we know why it was better quality? I I think sometimes mutation because when they take the coffee from Yemen and they plant it in Brazil, it's mutated from the uh, the tebika the, uh, the the right. the coffee which is in tebika. They mutate to Marco Gibe. Marco Gibe coffee is a mutation of tebika. And bourbon was planted in uh, Reunion was in uh, originally from Yemen. When they planted in bourbon, there are some mutation and some genetic. Uh, change and it's become smaller and more sweet. And but right. all the coffee origin is from from this area, from Tebika, from they call Tebika from uh, Yemen, from uh, mainly they call before Yemen. It's they call Arabic Peninsula uh, mm -hmm. and was is like part of Yemen and Saudi is the where now south of Saudi is Giza and Asir Al Baha. This is the area where the coffee also planted. And there are very high quality of the coffee in this area as well. And there are now programs from Saudi government, they plant a mm. lot of coffee in this area. And I think within five, six years, we will hear about of the new coffee or some really very interesting coffee from this area as well. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear the history as you're telling it and also to know that like, for example, in Jazan right now, there's a lot of investment from big, big companies like Aramco being invested into uh, cultivating these origins as coffee origins that are on the world stage. They're, Saudi Arabia is looking at making Saudi Arabia a big, big coffee producer with high quality coffee, right? Right. You know, I, I heard uh, there are, you know, uh, one of very, like, you know, what we call now geisha, Mm -hmm. Panama, Blue, Blue Mountain, Jamaica, or something funny names. Yeah. And there are there are coffee during the King Saud uh, Abdul Aziz, who is the who uh, the origin of Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. The area in Saudi called uh, the mountain Shadowy or okay. Shadowy, and this is very expensive coffee. Nobody can find it easily. And why really King Abdul Aziz like this coffee? And he just drink this coffee. Same as we right now, we say, oh, there are Panama Geisha from Esmerland uh, farm, and this is the coffee. But because there are media money behind it, and exactly, uh, yeah, uh, auction, uh, you buy the coffee with ten thousand dollar. A lot of money around. <laughs> you know? But in, in our history, <laughs> there, there are documented history. Yeah. So, 
So then it goes. So it goes from Habasha or Ethiopia. It goes to Yemen, and then from the Yemen, how does it go out from there? Oh wow, very interesting story. Then we we can say the in Habasha as a wild coffee and as a birthplace of the coffee tree in the world. Okay. Then a human they take the coffee and they plant it in Yemen. Okay. And when they planted it in Yemen. From 1400 to 1600, the only producer country for the uh, for coffee only Yemen. When we call Yemen, we call this part of Yemen and Saudi because of the same area. Because of the border. Uh, yeah, we, we call Arabic Peninsula. Yeah. And if, from 1400 to 1600, there are nobody knows coffee around the world. There are some of European when they come visit Aleppo, visit Damascus, they find people drinking coffee. We can talk about later. Yeah. Then the Dutch. On 1600, they come to Yemen during, and uh, this is uh, during end of Mamluk and the beginning of Ottomanic Empire. Was the the, the Ottomanic not very powerful and controlled the whole uh, area? And this Dutch, they call, the Dutch Netherlands right now or Holland we go. Yeah. They touch people. They take the coffee tree. They stolen even they they say they stolen the the beans and the coffee tree from Yemen and take it to Jawa. And the first coffee they planted in Jawa, which is called now uh, uh, in uh, Sri Lanka. In Java? Is it Java? Java, yeah, yep. Java. Correct. And they take as well coffee and they send it to Amsterdam. And they put it as a botanic, uh, bot, uh, botanical? Uh, they, and the, yeah, botanical gardens. And they plant a, a lot of coffee tree there, but Europe is not the place to grow the coffee. And uh, Dutch, not the people who colonial, uh, col- uh, colonize. They, they have colonially, yeah, they have colonized like French. Then they take a coffee tree to King Louis the Fourteen, uh-huh. And from there, the coffee starts separated from uh, uh, France, from Paris, to Martinique, or uh, uh, we call uh, East Montenegro, Indy. we call not, uh, East Indies. No, Martinique. Yeah, it's in the Martinique. We call Puerto Rico, Haiti, uh, yeah. and then from there to from Central America to South America, and then the coffee started from because before 1600, 1700, there are no coffee in Brazil or on the uh, all uh, Central America or South America. Wow. Before 1700, no coffee trees. You know, even in Brazil, the first coffee tree in Brazil, 1723. And before 1723, there are, yeah, yeah. And within 20, 30 years, there are millions of coffee tree was in Brazil because within the coffee equator and the coffee planted there. But all the coffee, let us go back to Yemen and all the coffee come from Yemeni, from the the Arabica variety, Mm -hmm. you know, species Arabica, the variety Tibica. Mm -hmm. And then... The first is in Java, then they take it from Java to uh, Sumatra, then from Sumatra take to the West Indies as mm-hmm. well, Papua New Guyana. And the sum of coffee beans uh, was by, by Baba Boudin taken on 16th era, like 1660, 1665, while he's on the way from uh, India, uh, from Mecca back to India, he passed through Yemen. Mm-hmm. And then he takes some coffee beans and he planted in uh, India. And the Dutch as well plant some coffee and coffee tree from Yemen in India. And then they take this coffee from India as well. They plant it again in uh, uh, in um, uh, uh, Timur and in Java. In Timor, East then Timor. The first co- yeah, yeah, Timor. And uh, then in um, uh, Java, then in India. And... Oh, and from there, they send some of coffee, even from Java, back to Amsterdam again. Wow. Okay. And this is the first, the first, the first, uh, let us say, the first part of the history. And on 1700, as well, the Dutch, they take coffee from Tibica coffee, which is called Tibica from Yemen. They take coffee and they plant it in Porpon Island, which is now Reunion. Ah. And they, from, from here, the name of Porpon come. The we Bourbon, there yeah. Are two, yeah, Bourbon. There are, there are the coffee species is Arabica. Then under Arabica, we have Tibica, and then we have Bourbon. Okay. Right. And 
and from here the 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 all the coffee start separate all over the world from only Yemen or from let's just call the Arabic Peninsula and the only like south of Saudi and uh, part of the Yemen, which is where it's the mountains and the suitable weather for the coffee planted. And all the coffee and within coffee planet in every part of the world, even in Haiti, even in uh, mm -hmm. uh, South, Central America, South America, uh, India, uh, even in uh, within the coffee belt, is all originated from Yemen and all the what we study in university, Zurich University, all the genetic research, mm -hmm. they said all the coffee come back to Yemen. Yemen. And all, Which was and from Yemen Habasha. Come, from Habasha, yes. Why we call Yemen? Because the very small variety in the world and mm -hmm. the, coffee, the coffee tree is self-pollinated and right. the coffee tree not like the Canifora because Canifora discovered in 1897. Right. Uh, um, there are a big, big, big gap between them. And the, 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 the very narrow variety, which is separated from Yemen, make the coffee really endangered. And the Kew Garden in London, the professor, who, Aaron, who gave us lecture in New Zealand University, mm -hmm. he talked about this, why endangered, because this very limited variety taken from Ethiopia. And the variety, which is in the world, only they, they, they call Tibica, and then Bopon, and all the cafeteria come to this variety. Right, and so their the genetic the, history the, dates back yes. to, when they do the genetic testing, it goes back to that, correct? Yes, exactly. They go to the same area, and they say in the genetic research is in 1500, all the coffee started from Yemen. Gosh, that's so cool. The, you mentioned for the first time in our conversation, you started talking about Canephra, or some people may know this as Robusta. In the next episode, we are going to start talking about where these names came from. Where did uh, Arabica then as a name come from and where does Canephra or Robusta, uh, where was it discovered and, and where do these names come from? So folks, join us in the next episode as we continue this really fascinating conversation, Hamid, this is really interesting. Thank you. Join us in the next episode, Thank folks. Peace, you. love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.